Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have Carmen Glick, and she is a she is the CEO of a very popular logistics company, and she's here today to talk about a lot of important topics that she felt she wanted to address. And I'm really excited to have you on the show, Carmen. Tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Thank you. I'm super excited being here, and thank you for, for inviting me. So as you say, I'm the CEO for Shift Forward. Shift Forward is a digital freight forwarder. We provide logistic services to uh, small and medium-sized companies in the United States. And uh, we provide all types of services uh, from door in origin of, of Asia to uh, customer warehouses uh, in the US and uh, including full container, less trucking, insurance, custom, and everything uh, any business needs to handle their global supply chain. Yeah, I, I think it's so important. I think people don't realize the importance of um, logistics and how it plays such a huge role in our society. When, you know, now because of COVID uh, and because so many changes have occurred, people have been shopping more online. You go to a Amazon, for instance, and you can get something within, you know, 48 hours to your door, you know, and uh, and it's all because of logistics, you know, and, 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 and it's so important to have companies that provide, you know, a strong logistics program to get things to where it needs, or else we would, we would be in crisis as a whole country, you know, even globally, we'd be in crisis and it's, it's happened, you know, and one of the things that really changed a lot was, was COVID and, and how do you feel COVID made such a huge impact for the world of logistics? I think, first of all, it puts logistics in the front Let's say we, as logistics people, I'm, I'm in the industry for more than 25 years. Uh, mm -hmm. We are always in the back. We are back there making sure everything would run smoothly, uh, will arrive on time, crisis, weather, storms. This is our role. And I think what happened in COVID is that suddenly uh, the chain is broken. The demand was so high and the complexity was so high and the chain was broken and then everyone realized, wow, I just cannot get what I want at the moment I want it. And yeah. then logistics really came into the front and, and people realized the importance of logistics into their day-to-day -day life as before it, it was not the case. So first of all, for us, of course, we tend to believe that as logistics people, we just need to make sure everything goes smooth and every exception goes smooth. So um, it was a tough period of time. On the other hand, it really exposed the challenges and the complexity that, that we need to deal with, that everybody actually will get their choices at the time they want it. And, and that's not an easy thing to, to make. And uh, infrastructure that needs to be invested on and, and develop further to enable that growth and that ability to really deliver on time or on the moment, you said 48 hours, but it could also be in a few hours. So, so that's, that's a massive machine like behind the screens. I think, I think people really um, realize how important logistics was when everything was shut down and you yeah. saw the, the crisis of, you know, a lot of uh, things weren't in the stores anymore. Um, people were going crazy over toilet paper and paper towels for some reason, you know, it was like everyone want, needed to have, you know, like six months worth of paper towels and toilet paper in their basement. For... <laughs> Not really sure yeah. why. You know? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm pretty sure there will be. Uh, <laughs> somebody will study about that why people were not like going for food and and they were yeah. trying to have toilet paper, right? What what does it mean to the human being to to have a toilet paper versus uh, versus yeah. food or or so on? But I, I mean that that's the interesting part of it, right? And yeah. I think it's so linked to to shift forward because we have actually. Uh, I we found the chief forward in COVID in 2021 when we realized that there are so many small businesses that are being shut down because they are incapable to maintain the cost of logistics and capable to provide to their customers. 
and they were not given any logistics assets. In, in that, I mean that small businesses were really, really struggling and everybody was struggling, of course. Also, large corporate, medium-sized corporate was struggling, but they had more procurement power in front of their logistics uh, partner. So yeah. when, when we found the Ford it was with the aim to provide assets to the small businesses that they, they were able to uh, register online to shifor.com and, and order and get the allocation, get the equipment and get their goods moving, no matter if they have one shipment or, or what under shipment, let's say so. Yeah. You know, I, I even noticed when COVID was over, it took it took almost people a year later were affected. You would go into stores you know, and they just they just had whatever they had in the back they were selling and they were seasons behind. And, you know, it was it took them over a year to start to catch up. It's now that you go into the stores, you're starting to see everything come back to normal. But it took quite a while for everything to get back to normal because, you know, you know, logistics can only do so much, you know, it is only 24 hours in a day, you know, and it took a while to get, you know, to get everything back to normal. You know, it was amazing the, the strong impact um, that logistics had in our society, because without logistics, you know, the, the country would be lost. We wouldn't, you know, businesses would be out of business, big, small, corporate, because, and that was happening. Some of the biggest businesses that have been around forever were closing down or they were closing a majority yeah. of their shops down because it, they lost so much money in that in that span of time. Definitely. I think logistics is about transfer of good, but also about transfer of money because yeah. uh, you, you need to buy, say, to be manufactured, it's to, to move off of the world and it needs to be distributed uh, to your customers, right? This old chain, it takes months. It's, it's, yeah. it's not just, you know, it's not happening in a day and when part of the chain is, is broken, that means that also you have a significant impact on your income, on your cash flow. It's 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 even immediate, right? So so that's why uh, businesses were suffering big time and, and many got shut down indeed. And this is where we thought, okay, this is the biggest gap we have in our industry and we need to create a solution for small businesses that they will be able to handle this in a much better way. And, and I think this is, for me, it was my kind of, uh, I'm very passionate about because working many years in, in supply chain and actually most of my career in a very large corporation, mm -hmm. I, I would say, and, and they're great, but they have been taken care of very well. And then yeah. we have the small businesses that basically um, have a gap, have a gap also with their knowledge to deal with our industry but right. also have, have a gap with their procurement power uh, with their logistics partner. You know, I also noticed that, you know, so much has changed also with, with when it comes to global change, you know, over, you know, and I, and I think people started to wake up when, after COVID, they realized, you know, the importance of, of taking care of, you know, our environment, taking care of everything around us. Has that had any change in logistics? You know, the way logistics is run, has global change affected logistics in any way? I think definitely. I think, you know, when, um, when COVID happened and we are past COVID and everybody thought, okay, we will be back to normal yeah. but we need to find what is that normal is because a lot of things have changed and we have now geopolitical issues around the world that even make it you know harder to go back to whatever normal it is so you have the geopolitical change you have the kind of power of the force of china which is the manufacturer of the world and mm -hmm. um and, and U.S. that having different laws apply for, for goods importing from China. And, and then you have the, the businesses in the U.S. that need to think, okay, what, what I'm going to do? Um, I need to diversify my suppliers because, you know, if Apple, after 25 years of manufacturing in China, built a factory in India, um, that is a signal and it's a, it's a very strong signal. And we see with our customers also 
which are the, the small size businesses that they're looking into um, diversify their portfolio and for example starting importing from Vietnam or or India or other location in the world how to how to uh, do it with Mexico for example which is closer uh, mm-hmm. to US uh, so there is a lot of moving parts and you need a lot of knowledge to be able to diversify uh, your supply chain and this is also something that we come into the picture and can support as well because of as, as a global uh, company and part of um, public group, we are able and we have the capacity to do so. But it's really that businesses that need to look, okay, who is my logistics supplier? Can he support me if I'm changing uh, or want to include more diversity in my supplier's portfolio? You know, it's it's amazing too. Like when you know, I've seen a lot of changes when it comes to technology, and it comes to you know even digital technology, and and so many things have been popping up. The world of AI has come about. You know, so many different you know means of technology have popped out in just a short period of time. Has this improved logistics at all, or has it made huge changes in the way logistics is run now? Um. I believe so. Not enough, but I think there is more to come. There is really, really more to come. I think logistics, we are probably one of the biggest industry that have yet to be really, you know, disrupted in a way of technology and digitalization, but we are definitely in the way. And I have to say that COVID had a big role in that happening faster than it happened before because now we are realized that if we need to work from home or if we don't have access to our office or too far if something happened it could be a virus but it could be a weather it could be a variation of of things we need to go digital and we need to go digital fast we are yeah. not anymore able to sit in the office have import files export files you know which which this is how how the the industry uh, worked and is still working to the biggest part. And that really brought a lot of urgency, I believe, to all the players that we are in a different game ball. We have to bring technology in and we have to accommodate that technology because technology exists. It's not lack of technology, but it's actually lack of integrating technology into our day-to-day uh, working, which exists into our day-to-day life. You know, we know, we discuss a bit that we know more going and shopping um, in the store so much, uh, but we do it online. Um, but when we look at the business side, they actually continue to work in a very manual, traditional way. And mm-hmm. that's, that must change because we, it, it kind of, it put us to a point we have no other choice. We really yeah. need to do it. So I think uh, COVID really, really uh, made urgency of the matter. I think the player of the industry also understand that and needs to take more and more technology in and have more and more transparency out to the customer. Do you think with all the changes in technology and how everybody is now mostly doing a majority of their shopping online, do you think that will hurt the economy? Because now people are going online to order everything and all these mom and pop stores and all these small businesses, um, do you think they're going to be affected? Do you think it will will hurt those small businesses? You know, change always hurting somebody, but has the ability to really recreate something else much bigger. So, for example, um, when I, uh, last week I was in in Vegas in the Alibaba.com conference, when I saw so many small businesses, um, you know, a mom, a gardener that, you know, that open a, a website that starting digitally to procure from, uh, for example, Alibaba.com that uses our platform for logistics and they do it from the garage or from their comfort of their home. And it allows so many people 
uh, to grow and, and create value and income for their life, what was not the case before. So we had a lady that she was talking that she was working in a corporate and then she became a mom and she was really looking to do something uh, from home because it was very difficult for her to go back to the corporate. And that technology enabling her to do it and she's very successful so yes, if you are the, the store on the street, on the high street, that you see less and less volume of, of people um, reaching to your store, it's going to hurt you. But will you take the opportunity and turn it into a digital offering that will enable you a whole world and maybe even more customer that you used to have on the high street? So I really, I think it's really um, changing. And mm -hmm. those that cannot cope with the change, yes, it, it's a problem. And, and I think we see it. I think mm -hmm. we see it in a lot of empty malls around and around the U.S., right? Um, yeah. But I also think it gives so many opportunities to so many people, actually many more, because today to open an online shop and to procure, buy a product, ship it digitally, for example, with Chief Forward, um, reaching uh, to your customer direct, you don't need so much, let's say, um, assets. You don't need a store, you don't need to pay rent. You don't need to do, you don't need to do, you do need uh, some cash flow, yes, but much less than you mm -hmm. used to have before. So I think that's a huge opportunity to entrepreneurship around the world and in the US, definitely. Yeah, you know, I, I've seen it happen so many times too. I've seen a lot of businesses now, um, they, you know, when their business was hurting, they turned it on into an online business and they did had a majority of their inventory online instead of in, in, the, uh, in the business. And they actually started to thrive that, you know, yeah. most of their income was coming through their online business. And some businesses, I, I had known some businesses that closed down their actual business and took that business and turned it into a online business and they're thriving now because they, okay. you know, and all they did was transfer it and put all their energy into that digital, you know, website. And it, it uh, did wonders for their income. Definitely. I mean, definitely you can, you can have so many possibilities and channel to sell and to reach out audience that you didn't had before because it, when you had a shop on the street, you were limited to the people that were actually uh, passing your street, right? Yeah. But when you are online, it's endless of opportunity and it's different game ball indeed. And you need to uh, learn different skills and, and, and so on. And I do understand that some people are less up to it, but it definitely gave more opportunities. But when you do it, you need to really digitalize your old chain from procurement, logistics as you say online inventory and not physical inventory then you have your online shop and then you have the distribution to the mm -hmm. to the final buyers of yours that's a that's a different chain um but again it's not a rocket science uh, so many have done it and definitely thrive with it yeah, I'm definitely seeing a, a success with it. I see a, a lot of people have uh, really, um, you know, have have entered a whole new business, you know, and 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 have made um, a ton of money just by doing it. Yeah, and it is a different chain, but if it's done correctly and the right way, yeah. it could be definitely. very successful. Yeah, indeed. Now, tell us a little about your business. So, ship forward. You know, what is it all about? So we are a digital freight forwarder, a digital logistics uh, partner for small businesses. We really develop a product that fits small businesses. So we made a choice. You know, mm -hmm. uh, many, many of logistics players will say we, we can serve everyone, but I don't believe in this everyone concept because in the end of the day, you know, every business may, makes its priorities. Our platform is very simple to use, is designed to businesses that don't have uh, the full understanding of, of global shipping, but can mm -hmm. still go and uh, search from where they want their product to be uh, going from and to get immediate pricing, get really um, 
additional services, if they need custom, if they need bond, they can quickly uh, ask if they need any questions. We have 24 seven support team around the clock. And this is something that was very important for me to establish because I understand that small business is very lean and from nine to five, you might need to deal with your customer, with your suppliers, and then it eats you, you know, uh, maybe Saturday morning or uh, Christmas day. I don't know, but we are there uh, to, to support, not with bots, with real people that, that provide that service around the clock. And I think that's very important. We have really went into the day-to-day -day, uh, challenges of small business and we say, okay, how we can help how we can bring our uh, value forward. And, and that's what we are doing. That's also why we call She Forward. <laughs> uh, because it, it, it's really about, you know, our business, there's so many players, you know, you need to make sure that whoever segment of customer you choose to provide that service gets that value and get that fast. So if you go to She Forward, uh, dot com you can you can actually um register in a few minutes and start booking your shipment in five minutes and and that's really um not easy normally uh yeah. in our industry there is yeah. a lot of of different complexity but mm -hmm. our job is to take technology not for the sake of it but to help us to simplify the process for our customers now, do you just work with people in the United States or are you a global company where you, you help people globally? We conceptually help people globally. Everyone can log in from, from any place, but, but for us, our main market, it's, it's uh, Asia to US. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I believe it's the biggest market and I want to be presenting the biggest market and Whoever wants to uh, use our services are more than welcome. But indeed, me working in the logistics and uh, majority, I worked in Asia, also lived in Europe. And, and really, there is a lot of customization um, that are special rules and, and customs and, and uh, obligation in every country. So it's not really easy to streamline, yeah. but definitely we can provide provide that service globally. Now, um, for everybody who, who is interested in using your company and helping their, their business, you know, um, so they can actually grow themselves because they have what they need when they need it and their customers have what they need, where can they find you? They can find us everywhere. They can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, on uh, LinkedIn, they can easily go into our website with cheap the letter the number four wd.com um and and we are there again 24 7 they can contact our people they can ask any questions that they might have and and they will get an answer uh, immediately now for um for uh, people who are listening to this today, is there a specific things that you would like to emphasize maybe from our discussion, some important factors that you think um, are important for our listeners to understand and know? Yeah, I think that the world is moving very fast. We are experiencing many challenges that uh, that maybe you know before COVID we thought, oh, this is rare. And suddenly it become every year, so it's less and less rare. And and I would like businesses out there really to think of uh, their challenges, think of what they need to do to survive, to change, to learn, to maintain, try uh, various options and, and really, really move towards the digital uh, way, not because not to be digital, because this is really how we operate as human been in in our environment today and i think that it's important if you are a digital seller mm -hmm. and you are looking at maintaining a supply chain which is which is fluent to mm -hmm. your your customer you need to make sure that you have the right partner in doing so right i agree with you 
And is there anything else that you'd like to emphasize before we leave? Uh, what to say? Stay safe. And we are here uh, at uh, she4.com. Wherever you need us, we'll be here. Thank you. I love it. Thank you so much, Karmic, for coming on the show today. I really think it's important that people, you know, sometimes they, you know, logistics gets lost, you know, and people don't realize, you know, how important logistics is. But I think COVID woke a lot of people up. And I think a lot of people, especially with today's technology, um, you know, people are realizing that, you know, the digital um, direction is, is where everything is going. So in, it's really an important, you know, aspect for people to learn more about. And if they have a digital business or they're thinking about going in a digital business, they really need a, a company, you know, in logistics that will get them the right products and get them to them, you know, at the right time, you know, and uh, because there, there are times when you can work with companies and their logistics is horrible, you know, but if you work with the right people and the right company and you know they're reliant you know it really makes the whole process go quickly they you know when those products get to the places they need to on time it makes a big difference you know you have a happy customer you have a profitable business and you know everybody overall is happy so i really appreciate what you're doing you know i think you know thank that you is, is great and i think you guys are really headed in the right direction and you have the, the uh, you know you're really on top of things because you're you know right on the button when it comes to you know the way things should be done and where they're going so thank you so much for coming on this show i really do appreciate it thank you Stacey. thank you very much have a great uh, day oh you too you have a great day bye bye <laughs>